Hola, amigos, and welcome to Club Prairie Fire, the home of tequila, Tabasco, and the Duckworth Lewiston system. On the Wee Potty today, firstly, a massive guest, one of the biggest we've ever had. I won't reveal yet. Also, another test win for the Aussies against the Kiwis. Even the positivity from the inner team turmoil, those plucky Kiwis couldn't get it done. Uh, also, India, despite being the second best team in the contest, are very lucky to, to win the series 4-1 against England in Dharmashala. And finally, the European Cricket League, those Estonian destroyers, the Talon Stallions. Yes, they smashed the Isle of Man, based Crosby by 70 runs. It was that man, uh, Gulam Abbas Butt, smashing 108 off just 32 balls. Uh, go the butt. Go the butt. Um, let's bring in the regulars. Let's bring them in. A very, very serious cricket pundit, uh, Michael Vaughan. Uh, a wiki with a love of fiery shots, Adam Gilchrist, and another horny Englishman who calls Bondi home. It's Ollie Silverton. Welcome, gents. How are you all? Yeah, hello, hello. <laughs> Good yeah. stuff. Excited. I'm excited. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, this is a big podcast. This is a big podcast. Is. I, I, like, I like butts innings. That was a good yeah. innings in the, the European League. That was a tremendous hundred. One of the best. One of the great yeah. hundreds. Yeah, 30, 30, what day was it? Was it Tuesday? Uh, I'm yes. not sure what day it was. Yeah, I think it was a Tuesday. Uh, no, nah, you're right, Vaughn. And our guest would be proud of an innings like that. But she's a little, little bit nervous, a little bit tense, actually, just the enormity of what we're about to unveil. Did you, Gilly, did you want to reveal now who it is? Or are we, yeah, I suppose well, we do. I, mean, I reckon by the time you know, anyone's tuned in, we've already plugged the hell out of it in right. our advertising, given our budget that we have to advertise around yeah, the world. But- you, Who you is far it? away. You Who far away. Jack? You, you do it. You, you, no, 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 you do it. Okay, I'll do it. You do it. Yeah, yeah. As I say, a boat that would have happily take a 100 ball, 32 ball, 100, and probably done it a number of times. None other than the man making probably the most well-followed, documented comeback uh, for a long, long time, Rishabh Pant, India's favourite, one of the great young players of the cricketing globe, Obviously, uh, set back through injury from a car accident, and he is ripping and raring to go. We're going to have him very, very shortly. Yeah, Paul looking for you know, that's a tremendous get. I mean, to get a player that's obviously, um, you know, kind of modelled his game on basketball, it's tremendous to have him on the podcast. <laughs> I thought, thought you were going to say modelled the game on me there, Vaughny, because that's that's my first question is going to be who was his inspiration as a youngster? But you're going to tell me that he's going to say... Brendan McCullum, Ben Stokes, and Basball. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, 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 he got given an email years ago before Basball actually was, uh, um, you know, uh, if, if you like, Basball came to, to light the last two years because it came to uh, the fore in terms of being on television. But there was emails sent many, many years before that. So he got that email. <laughs> okay. okay. And um, we'll ask him. On that, we may have to update his um, Crick Info because we've got a quiz on him later. But his first line of his Crick Info, a match-turning, swashbuckling batter-keeper in the Adam Gilchrist mould. Mm. Rishabh Pant has, has had a starring role in more than a handful of India's biggest test match is in the last <laughs> few years. There you go. Gilly, I didn't know you could hack into Crick Info. That's very good, mate. <laughs> you can update anything you like there, mate. No dramas. No dramas. Um so let's, uh, we've got to just do really quickly. Obviously, Ollie, what date number are we up to? I think this is what most people want to hear. Where are you? Um, is fourth, yes, fifth date? What do you got? Very quick, just because it's a big week. Date four is tomorrow. It's the golf driving range. And then we're nearly back to backing it. Date five, we're going to the Waratahs on Saturday, to up to two a week. <laughs> so yeah, it's becoming, you know, and it was her birthday yesterday. Um, she was in Bali, so I haven't seen her. So, oh, yeah, it's all happening. Um, the hat might be coming. Uh, so you tell you one of your early dates was a quiz night at the pub. Uh, then you're saying you're going golfing. Then you go into the Waratahs. Are you dating um, Mary from something about Mary Cameron Diaz? Yeah, does that sound like? Does, does she chug down a beer in about three point two seconds or something? Or yeah, and I'll have what she's having. Uh, exactly right. That is, um, that, and that's what's going on here. I think, yeah. but it's great. Very I'm nice. The dates, <laughs> Ollie. Can it, can it- just for our YouTube uh, millions that watch every week, can I just bring to uh, their attention that, that what's that piece of art behind you, Ollie? It looks like there's a lid. It looks like a bit of a... Oh. <laughs> you know who that is, everyone? <laughs> Do you know who that is? That's um, the Olympian Ian Thorpe. Ian Thorpe with a beard. 
So do you want to know the story behind that is Ollie is currently in the offices of SEL, who James right. Erskine, who you both know well. Yeah, we do a bit yeah. of work out of there. He uh, looks after Thorpey. That picture was painted by the great Aussie comedian Arne Doe ah, on the yeah. show A Brush With Fame. Is that what it's called? Mm. Did you ever go on yeah. that, Gilly? No, you've got to be famous to get on there. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wait <laughs> with bated breath. If not, it's nothing on Vaughny's caricature from last week, which people really enjoyed. I think that was the main yeah. part. Um, yep. We, we yeah, need to... Holding it up again there. Vaughny, I was wondering this later on when I actually... I was the viewer that watched the show back, um, so I'll take credit for that one click. But Vaughny, what are you more happy with, that particular piece of art or your your Lord's portrait? <laughs> oh, well, yes, yes. Um, I've always believed in life that uh, you either want to be the best at something so everyone talks about you yeah. or you want to be the worst at something because um, everyone talks about you. If you're in the middle, everyone forgets you. I've... Quite possibly. I would go as far as saying I've got the worst portrait, um, <laughs> not just at Lords. I would suggest if there's a better, worst portrait in the world, <laughs> I haven't seen it. No. Correct. Really? <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> uh, but right. You're right. You do we'll, hold a world title with it. We'll put it up. The, 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 person that, um, the person that painted Thorpey, was that his first go at doing that? Or <laughs> Yeah, have you ever heard of Arne Doe, Michael Vaughan? He is he yeah, writes kids' Arne. books. He's a stand-up Arne comedian. Um, I'm currently forking out about oh, 25 bucks a week because my son is going through his books. Yeah, he's yeah, got all these books here. He's got Weirdo. He's yeah. got um, Ninja Kids. He's got a um, oh. couple about dogs. So he's a talented man. Um, there he is. Hmm. There. Um, Did he do? His- there's Vaughn's portrait. Who's that? For those listening, <laughs> Ollie's just holding up to the screen the the said portrait that hangs in now in the pavilion at Lords. There's that big one, that one of Sir Vivian Richards, masterful, you know, strong like a tiger, big, strong unit that he is, commanding the cricket world. Uh, Warney's there. Warney's one's heroic. You know, a bit of sweat coming down from another successful spell at Lords or somewhere in an Ashes contest. And then <laughs> Vaughn looks like not similar to Montgomery Burns out of the Simpsons, but yeah, well, uh, looking very <laughs> slim. You bring, some, bring something to Lords is at the can, can prefer, you're, you're a good man to ask this. Lords is in uh, London. That's right, isn't it, Professor? <laughs> yeah, it is. I believe so. Yeah, so yes. you, you would think it would have a little bit of a affiliation with uh, the England players, the MCC. Yeah. I'd say so. If you look at the, 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 the portraits of the ex England players, so myself, I think others, Nasser's is quite good. Uh, yeah. Graham Bush, it's, uh, it's up there with mine. Uh, and then you go Laura <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Cattle Dev Dev uh, and Vivian Richards, who's they're magnificent. Oh, but yeah. They, I, I got told I, I didn't quite give my um, and she was a lovely lady that uh, painted that portrait. I didn't quite give her enough time. Um, <laughs> That's what it looks yeah. like. You had to sit for it, did you? I think I sat for three hours for that. Oh goodness, man! Uh, we've learned oh, yeah. from the um, social pages that they like basically humiliating ex. English cricketers, yeah. based on oh, how often they show your dismissals. Well, I reckon. They'll, be back on. they'll be back on after this uh, episode just to, you know, promote that piece of art. I mean, it's prominent as well. As you walk from um, the, the ground through the, the long room, you turn left to go to the England dress room, then you turn through the long room right up the steps and you go one flight of steps and then you turn back on yourself, another flight of steps in the dress room. As you go up the first flight of steps, I am there. <laughs> that is where I live. And I, I would say I reckon I get four, I, I'm, and I'm not exaggerating, I must get 100 WhatsApp messages per annum <laughs> with people on the tour of Lords going, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it, is, it is fun. Uh, and um, I know we, we've got uh, Mr. Pant in 10 minutes. We've got to get through mm. New Zealand. So for that yeah. is my new social update. Now, NordVPN only need a few more of you to sign up on that link and then they're back again. This week, they're having a little break. I'm still going to say their name, but NordVPN.com forward slash CPF. 
That's the social. Vaughny, three comments on that. The first one is, you just wrote splendid tongue out emoji, which I enjoyed. The other two who replied to your artwork of your portrait there are Lee Westwood, who said Vaughny could only dream of that hairline. And Spectators said, we've got a phone you can call for for this. They were the three (laughs) main replies to the portrait. (laughs) Very good, very good. Can you just send me that picture, please? I'll I'll put it on our socials just to see what the response of our millions of uh, followers are. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. (laughs) Yep. I'm sure they'll love it, Vaughny. I'm sure they'll absolutely love it. Just remind me, so nordvpn.com forward slash cpf we just need a few people yeah and then they're back and then they're back okay before it's from up the gift okay make sure you're doing it i'm gonna be traveling again soon so i'll certainly be linking that one in and uh yeah using it very good very good indeed now we do want to just quickly touch on australia versus new zealand before uh we're joined by uh rushab um obviously well it was a good test match in the end um (laughs) australia ended up winning by three wickets when they probably shouldn't have um alex well, as in, I, I see your face there, Gilly. As in, leading into the last day, surely New Zealand was nicely poised to win it. Um, yeah. Win- Winviz had them at, I think it was about seventy-eight percent, which I know you both love. Winviz, it's your favourite thing. <laughs> Never wrong at the end, is it? Um, but then, obviously, uh, Alex Carey, that man, got it done, ninety-eight. Um, he and Paddy Cummins, Paddy Cummins hit the winning runs, though. Gilly, what would you have done if you're on ninety-eight? And uh, the other bloke hit the winning runs. Yeah. yeah, that was an interesting the way that played out. Paddy wanted to maintain that bit of history of those those three 250-plus run chases in the last, what, eight years or something, and he's hit the winning runs on every occasion. So he said, stuff you, Kez, I'm taking the glory. But uh, no, Kerry would have been down there going, don't worry about it, mate, just do it, just get the runs, just do it. And then as soon as Pat hit that ball, Kez would have gone, Fuck, I wasn't serious. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we've got, we got a day and a half to go here. We're knowing this. But uh, a, one of the, you know, a, that's a landmark innings for Kerry. Silence the, the critics. Just allows him now to go about his, his winter, whatever that entails, and prepare for a test series uh, without any incident or issue uh, once India come out here in um, towards uh, next summer. So that was that was brilliant. Really happy for him. I this baseball, we can't we can't get through a cricket conversation without it coming up, can we? And no, you well, you know, Vaughny, I, I know you're saying in jest that Rishabh Pant, he was um, affected by it. That's why he plays the way he does. I, I know you're joking about that because I do know that it was fully him modelling himself on me. Um, but um, I think the way this is infiltrating enemy lines is, is something to be explained. I mean, the cricket world's gone woke. When Daryl Mitchell's quoted as saying, "We don't want to be judged as black caps by the, our results; it's just by the way we played and yeah. inspiring the nation." Uh, paraphrasing there, but um, we, we got a competition or a level of cricket here called Master Blasters. Blasters are sponsored by Woolworths, one of the supermarket chains. That's introductory level cricket where everyone gets a go and everyone gets a medallion at the end of it, and you all get a little certificate, and hopefully you come back for more next time. Has Test Cricket become Master Blasters? Well, yeah, I think it has. I mean, it's very important that you entertain. Um, and first and foremost, the question that I'll ask all three of you, were the Christchurch supporters, the crowd, the Aussies, the New Zealanders, were they entertained over the course of the four days? Absolutely. Yeah, you have to yeah. say yes. Yep. I think. Yeah. Well, there you go. They delivered their uh, objective. They entertained yep. the crowd. Um, forget the results. Was I, I it an Okay, yes. my, Ollie, uh, sorry, Vaughn, my question is, why aren't any of the teams that are winning saying, we don't <laughs> we want to be care. judged on the win, we just <laughs> want to be judged on how we play? Um, see, that, that, drunk. <laughs> see that, 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 that's, that's where, that's where it all, all goes to fucking part. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. That's no, a good point, Prof, a good point. Um, yeah, that was, uh, no, good, good, good couple of games. It was on, a, on a serious note, I, I, I must admit, I, I studied that game. It was a great game to to watch. Um, some good cricket, uh, ebbs and flow, perfect kind of advert for Test cricket, where you feel a team's ahead, and then a team gets back in, and a team goes ahead, and all of a sudden, uh, was that, not so? Out- was that from Portugal you were studying it? <laughs> <laughs> I was up there. 
I was okay. up through the night. I was drinking a lot of tequila in Portugal. Magnificent <laughs> new resort in Portugal. Just check it out, Costa Terra. Uh, it's actually right. owned by a Casa, uh, Casa de Amigo guy. Lovely, oh. lovely place. All right. And, and, and by the way, I, I must tell you about this golf resort. It has tequila on every tee box. Oh, this oh, is this my kind and, of golf. And, and, and Ollie, you're, you're like this, Ollie. On the first tee, there's a little uh, lovely house that they've built, small one. And inside it is bottles of Casa de Amigo tequila. Whoa. And then there's, a, there's an ice section with ice short glasses. Oh. You pour it on the first tee, you pour yourself one of the tequilas, and then you neck it, and then there's a target about 15 <laughs> yards away, and you throw your glass, and if you hit the target, you get a mulligan. <laughs> oh, <that's good. laughs> well, actually, it's the second time tequila and golf's come up this week, because I got a bizarre message on Sunday morning. Mark Wahlberg is at your golf club. He's here promoting his tequila, Fleshur Azul. Mm. Launched yeah. in Australia this week, Tequila, and he was golfing course and then went to F45 in Bondi and did a live. So I think we're going to have to hit that up. He's living in Rose Bay for a little while, Mark. Oh, oh, go, go around. Go around with your girlfriend. <laughs> go around with your girlfriend. Yeah. Get, him, get him on the show. Does it, yeah. Is that a good tequila? Flesh is that oh, good? yeah, it's very good. Yep. yep. Yeah, very, very nice. Uh, all tequila is pretty good, to be honest. All. Um, just, uh, yeah, but back on that test match, I have to say... Um, <laughs> I, I enjoy watching. I mean, not not out Pat. He, he just is always there at the end. But Alex Carey is one of the good guys of the game. He, he is one of the, 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 the true gentlemen of the game. And I, I don't think there's many around the world that wouldn't have been watching that. Just just seeing him get to that score under a huge amount of pressure to yeah. see Australia through to a victory. I don't think there's many around the world that wouldn't have been watching that going, good on him. He's a yeah. good one. He, one he of the was good under guys. a bit of pressure going into it, was he? The other one was Marnus Labashay, and there's been a fair bit of chat. He got his uh, to 90, but did you guys catch the Glenn Phillips catch? Because that has done millions oh, yeah. of years, and people throwing out, is it one of the best of all time, slash, is he the best fielder? Because he keeps having I these think, extra moments. I think he's the, he's the most handsome fielder. Oh, Vaughan, you're the best fielder? Oh, well, sorry. In my, I was just saying he's in my league, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> he played in the Northern Leagues, did he? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, good catch. Yeah, very good catch. Uh, great catch. Congratulations, uh, Australia win that one 2 nil. Uh, huge gap now until the next Test match. Not until uh, November against India at yeah. uh, in Brisbane. So um, yeah, put that red ball away, Australia, and uh, pick up the white one. Uh, but on yep. that, hey, we should get to our special guest. I'm very excited here. Let's just before uh, we bring Rishab in, I've just written a little intro. Very quick little intro here. Rishab, uh, right, time for our very special guest. This is the show that houses devastating wicketkeeper batsmen, and our guest is one of the current greats, a man who has represented India in tests 33 times. He holds the record for the most dismissals in a single test match with 11. He's amazing to watch with the bat and even better to listen to on the stump mic. Please welcome Rishab Pat. Hey. Uh, Hey guys. How are you, buddy? Hey, thanks so much for Yeah, I'm 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 good. You're looking around the screen there, seeing all these different faces. But uh mate, wonderful to have you. Thanks so much for doing this uh for us. You look brilliant, clearly very encroaching on a comeback, and uh, uh just great to have you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. No, my yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, well, I guess we need to ask you a question, Richard, I suppose. Um Mate, the, the, the question everybody wants to know is, how are you? How, how are things? How's the body? How, how are you feeling? I think, firstly, I would say thank you for having me, all of you. Really appreciate. I love all of you guys. I've been watching your oh, podcast. You're the one. But this is strictly because of Gilly, this is happening. That's for sure. <laughs> so, thank you for having me. <laughs> but I think amazing. I would say the word is amazing. Just feeling very nice all the way. Just running up, started my training in a positive manner, and that has been an amazing feeling altogether. Uh, uh, and and it's been brilliant, mate, to to be able to follow your progress. And you say you're running around and the IPL starts next week and you've been named as Delhi Capitals captain again. Maybe wicket-keeping from the start. But, mate, at any point, did you think 
this is beyond me. I'm, I'm not going to be back playing again. Or did you always have a belief there that you, you're going to be right and you'll get there one day? I think I always had the belief that no matter what, I have to start playing cricket. I don't know at what capacity and what time frame. But at the same time, I knew that I'm going to be back and hopefully I'm going to do better and better each and every day. That was the thought all along. And it's mm. so good to have you back, Rishab. Now, um, when we when you first jumped on here, but we weren't recording, you mentioned how excited you were to see uh, one of your all-time cricketing idols. Um, which which cricketer were you talking about there? Just so we all know. <laughs> see, everyone knows. See, that's Gilly. I think he's been an inspiration for me. Like because as a kid, I used to watch him a lot. And I am someone who doesn't like watching cricket a lot. <laughs> so he was someone I used to look up to the way he used to take on the field, batting, wicket keeping. Like I used to love everything about him. And when I met him in Australia for the first time, that was really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a roasting? <laughs> <laughs> Michael, how are you? <laughs> um, just a great to have you on. Um, so so pleased that uh, you're on the the world's biggest uh, cricket podcast uh, in our <laughs> eyes. Um, you said that you, you you did said that you copied Gilly in every sense, but you you didn't copy his ears. <laughs> See, this is what I tell people that you got to learn from your idol. Just don't copy them. This is what I tell everyone, and that <laughs> is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> 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 Very good, Rishab. Now, um, big news that so you've been declared fit yeah. to play in the IPL. You must be very excited about that. Batting and wicket keeping. Uh, first match, March 23rd. Um, you guys will take on the Punjab Kings. Um, how, how are you? You must be pumped. You're excited. You're, you're ready to go. I think really excited, time ahead, but at the same time, a little nervous also. You know, when. See, when you're sitting outside, you're talking, having all the fun, it's okay. But when you start getting inside the field, it's a different atmosphere altogether. So, a little nervous. But I think that comes with the game and it's part and part of the process. Really excited because I don't know how I'm going to feel, feel on the field when I first enter. Like, it's just I have goosebumps thinking about it. But at the same time, not thinking about that all the time. Yes, in part of my mind, I'm thinking about it, but just keeping it simple, having fun each and every day with a good energy, being positive around the people, and that's what it means. Yes, was. And <laughs> uh, Rishab, uh, Delhi, you're the captain. Are you are you kind of uh, happy with the squad that Ricky P, Ricky Ponting, the uh, legendary Aussie, uh, obviously the coach there, has put together for you? Pleased with the squad? I think mostly I'm very pleased because, see, in a mini option, you can't do much about it because whatever core you have, you have to figure out a way to make it work in a better way. That's the only thing you can do in a mini option. And I think our, <clears throat> some of the few options we had in middle orders was amazing. But I think there are a few bad news might come up that we are just trying to figure out is it true or false, just getting through to the players. I feel some player might not come. That might be a little setback, but setbacks are part of life. And then we got to move on and look for the new strategies. That's all. But really excited with this. Part. Yeah, we're talking. You know about setbacks, mate, because you've just overcome one of the one of the real challenging <laughs> period of, of anyone's career, really. So it's great to have you there. So it's IPL focus over the next two months. And then where does your mind go to? Do you do you look at possibilities of maybe playing again for India? Is it a T20 World Cup that you target? And obviously at the end of this calendar year, you could come back down under, down to Australia, and repeat a bit of history where you almost single-handedly led India to a, a series victory up there at the Gabba in amongst some other amazing innings. So are you, do you think, you, are you targeting getting back to international cricket? See, definitely, see, as a player, you want to get back to the international circuit. But at the same time, I don't want to think about everything too much. Yes, it's in back of my mind. But see, whatever it's in my plate right now, I got to think about that instead of just looking yep. too far ahead. 
I just try to keep it simple because the kind of world we are in nowadays it's so complicated anyways how can you keep it simple that's the best way i i look forward to it and just keep go keep going there enjoying each and every day have fun with because one thing which i missed was like being around the team you know with the teammates you have the banter you have funny moments and that kind of environment you can't get at home and that is something which i really missed looking forward to have fun with everyone and not thinking about too much about the future right now obviously rishab india just an amazing 4-1 win over england which gilly and myself really enjoyed every ball and every test match except for the first one um the other four were really good was it was it difficult to sit on the sideline and watch your team so, do so well was it was that a difficult process i don't think so i think if your team is doing well that's a good process i feel see i don't feel bad like about anything else like i just watch the cricket the way it's going on i'm not taking any side at the same time yes you want your team to be the winner at the same time but see cricket is something if you are watching you have to be little neutral i guess from outside otherwise it it always gets difficult to take sides but obviously my heart and soul is with indian cricket so nothing else matters so we want india to win mm, isn't yeah, it definitely <laughs> and you on the Yeah, yeah. We, we, we didn't find, yeah, the prof and I didn't find it hard to take sides in that series. We knew who we were going for and and they got the job done. <laughs> hey, uh, Rishab, you, you've got um, a, a, a wonderful attitude and a, a very positive mindset, clearly to come through what you've, you've come through and also the way that you play the game. Where does that come from? I think as a childhood, I, I was doing the same things. i i feel you know some things you do as a child then you grow up you keep on leaving those instead of adding to it and i am someone who likes to stick to the same thing and keep on adding stuff instead of leaving one thing behind and moving on so that is that part i have done really well i guess in my life like the way i used to play as a kid i've been trying to hold it for a while because as soon as you come to international circuit or you play at the professional level you know the pressure goes up for your performance in each and everything but at the same time you got to keep thinking that why did you start playing the game because you love it first thing was that but as soon as you go to these kind of circuit and play at the top levels you stop forgetting uh, sorry you start thinking about oh i want to do this for my play this that not enjoying the game and i am someone who wants to do the same thing but with the enjoyment in the it, game it's a really good point a good question for me too because rishab you would have seen all about the baseball and it's all about aggression but what it seems the pundits and the commentary is they've got to get a balance i don't think anyone has captured the balance as well as you have between aggression and not letting it become recklessness and you certainly did that in australia last time you were out here and, and won those test matches uh, is that always come easy or is that something you're learning as you go i think it's part of learning process it didn't come overnight but because you got to figure out how to make it happen that is also a part of it because when things go south in that everyone blames you mm. like crazy so that's the part where you have to believe in yourself when no one is there so what the good thing which i did in that part was like not thinking about too much you know you don't have to think about playing in a certain way yes you want to be positive but at the same time you got to see the ball and play the ball but your mindset is positive end of the day you got to play the ball when you start thinking about even the ball is not right or wrong oh no i have to push for the same play i was i was playing if cricket tells you how to yeah. play cricket you can't decide that i want to play only this way and then enter the field that's what was my sure. learning was sure. obviously uh, australian cricket lovers have a particular opinion <laughs> of baseball um we all think it's just reckless cricket that won't last and doesn't really work now the two english gents on this podcast <laughs> believe it's saving <laughs> test cricket and it's the greatest thing 
to happen. No, no Prof, it's saving sorry. the planet. Saving the planet. <laughs> planet. Sorry, saving the planet, not saving <laughs> test cricket. No. I would like to get the Indian point of view, and even better, from an Indian cricketer, what does India think about baseball? I think we are not thinking about that too much because, you know, you have to... <laughs> as a team, you have to find your own strength, not thinking about the opposition too much. Yes, you're going to take the knowledge, the way they are playing, but you got to focus on yourself and give your best shot instead of thinking about the other team. I guess. Wish up, have you got a dog? <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I was going to ask you to introduce you to the to your dog. But hey, just on um, playing England, Rishabh, if if there's one bowler you you faced many of the England bowlers, which of all the England bowlers that you faced did you like hitting to the boundary yeah. most? I think every bowler. <laughs> like, it's, it's so difficult in the world to just take out singular names because. You want to play the best, but I would say the difficult part was like Jim mm-hmm. Anderson. I wouldn't lie because it's been legend of the game and the way he has played the game, it's been like amazing. See, I feel it. See, whatever you are doing on the field, it's a different ball game altogether. But when you feel respect for someone, you gotta appreciate that, and that's what cricket has told me. And that guy is amazing. See, day in, day out, just coming, bowling there. I don't know how each and every day, but that's what he does. Amazing. <laughs> Rishab, one um, from me, and I ask the very hard-hitting, serious questions on this podcast, unlike the other three. So, um, you know, a real journalistic background. Um, you may have seen in the, in, in the last test, um, we've spoken about your amazing batting and keeping, but one thing I really love is, is, is your chat. The bit of chat back and forth with the players. And in the last test... Did you come across and see Shubman Gill and Johnny Bairstow have a couple of words? Did you maybe let him know what to say? Because that has gone great on social and, and it was very entertaining. I don't know if you've uh, come across it at all. I think it's amazing. Like It adds a certain dynamic to the game, I would say. It's not just we are playing cricket out there. We are fighting for winning the match. And when you're fighting in that kind of compassion and in a mindset, you have to, like, something has to come out. I feel like because of the mic and all, we try to curb our instinct all the time. But sometimes you got to let it free. Yes, people might do this, that, but you got to let it free, man. Just go out there, play the way you want to and just be relaxed what? on the field. And give you two so yeah, it's a good good call. Um, so you had a wonderful engagement a few years back with Tim Payne, where he ended up. Long story short, he ends up inviting you to come and babysit his kids, and there was a great photo on social media where you were holding onto one of his children alongside Bonnie. Uh, mate, I'm interested. What would you say to either Michael Vaughan? Well, let's start with Vaughn. What, what, how would you engage Michael Vaughn in a verbal stoush on the on the field? What are you saying to him to put him off his game? Not much. <laughs> I would say you are focusing too much on social media instead of playing your game. <laughs> and you'd be right. <laughs> Very good. What about Gilly? Rashad, what would you say to put Gilly off his game? I think he's anyways off when he's playing. He's in his own zone. You can't disturb these kind of people. So. Nothing much I can say to him. I'm already <laughs> slogging wildly. <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> you don't have to tempt me. <laughs> yeah, that was the idea. <laughs> uh, very good. Very good. But, um... Hey, Rick, 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 can, I, can I ask you to give um, England some advice? Hmm. Obviously, India have, have, have had success in Australia. England will be going down there. It's a, it's a, it's a fair way off. We're talking mm. about 18 months. They'll go down to Australia, 25-26 for the Ashes. Uh, the last few times, they've had a bit of a pummeling. But Indy, your team, you've found a way of knowing how to beat Australia in their own backyard. 
Can I ask you to give England some advice on what they need to do in the next 18 months to give them a chance? The Baz Ball has a chance of winning those Ashes in Australia. What do they need to do? I think they already already know what they need to do. But I would say just a simple thing like as a bat, batsman, I would say like when you are batting inside, instead of just punching the ball, look for to cut the ball, I would say. That's a simpler way. Like... Because when you punch the ball, there is more chance of you getting out or caught or whatever is that. But when you cut the ball, and Australia is a best place for cut and pull. The fuller ball will not disturb you much because mostly it's going to be back off then. Then obviously surprising one. But these guys bowl the fuller one like little wider off them. They don't bowl in the... They show you that it's in the driving area, but it's little far away because of the bounce and all. So I think if you look to cut instead of punching the ball, because in England, you can punch the ball in a better way than cutting because the wicket is a little choppy. But in Australia, I would say cutting the ball would be a better option than punching it. Mm. Simply. I like that. So basically, you just got mm. cut. <laughs> cut the Aussies. Cut them in half. I like that. Wickets are amazing. Wickets are amazing mm. in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Will you pass that on, Vaughny? Will you now talk I to Baz and Stokesy? I, I don't think I'll need to pass it on because this, this with, with Rishab on the on the, the YouTube, the podcast, this will go global. <laughs> that, 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 that message, you, you, you'll be part of the coaching team of England in a year and a half time and everyone will be coming <laughs> in. And then they will tell me that this kid is telling us to do what to do. Huh? You have put me in a spotlight. That's good. But also, but also, Rishab, um, how, how how about getting 20 wickets in Australia? Any advice for England on how to get the wickets? I think we need little bit, a little bit more pace bowling in Australia. I would say like 130 is, is the like best for batting, I would say, in Australia. If you have, even if it's bowling here and there, it's okay. But if you have more than 140 plus bowler, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Rishab, if, if in 18 months England regain the ashes, I'm coming after you. Right? Yeah. We're tracking you down. <laughs> hey, uh, tell us very quickly. We've got, we got a little quiz that we do. We know we, we don't want to keep you too long, but uh, we've got a little quiz. But I just want to know one thing. How do you find working with uh, – Vaughn, mentioned him earlier, uh, our great mate Ricky Ponting. Is he as grumpy still as what he was when he was Australian captain? Or has he just lightened up a little bit? Can he have a bit of fun with him? I think he has lightened ah. up a little bit. Now, more into professional setup because as a captain, I think you have to be a little <laughs> grumpy. But as a coach, you can't be that much. And I think he has gone a long way. And I ah, love very it. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> very, very good. All right. So, Rishab, we'd like to do a little quiz with our guests. Ollie writes a little something. You, Vaughny, and Gilly compete against each other. Uh, it's four or five questions. Um, you basically you just you give an answer, and then I'll give you a bit of a score update at the end. Uh, it gets rather competitive, as you can imagine. All these professional athletes in here. You know, cues. I'm gonna lose. I guess. <laughs> no, no, no. History depends on what you No, no, no. England's very good at losing at the moment, so don't worry. You're safe. <clears throat> Michael will win this one. That's for sure. I I feel it from inside. Before we go to the quiz, can I say your hairdo yeah. is immaculate? I mean, it's something that I dream of. And so, this is the top like this, man. I it's just woke up like this. <laughs> beautiful yeah. lid. Mm. All right. Um, beautiful. Well, um, this quiz feel like it should be sponsored by a gel company. But um, how it works is obviously, Rishav, you don't miss um, any of these episodes. So it's higher or lower um, is how it is. So I'll give some stats about your careers and we'll go through. And so um, number one, what is higher? Vaughny's first class batting average, Rishab's ODI average or Gilly's ODI average? And you can jump in whenever. Oh. I think Gilly's... First class. Rish- Rishab's I, going Gilly's ODI going average. Vaughan. Yep. I'm going You're going Vaughan. No, I'm going to go Rishab. I'm going to go Rishab because I think, uh, yeah, Rishab. Okay, we have got Rishab at 34.6, Gilly at 35.89, Michael Vaughan yeah. 36.99. Hey, there you, there go. you go. You yeah, said me, Gilly. You yeah. said me. Gilly, yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is a million based question, man. How would we know? <laughs> well, as, as you know from watching, Vaughny always wins because I run the quiz. Um, so next one, <laughs> next one we have is Gilly has one wicket in mm. T20 cricket. Vaughny has one wicket in T20 cricket, and Rishab has one wicket in first Oi. class cricket. Yeah. But who has the highest economy rate? The most expensive. So you, you, who's you, conceded the most yeah. runs? Right. In, in that format for that wicket, whose was the highest money. economy rate? I think money. Definitely think money. money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, yeah, I want to know who, who was the opponent you dismissed, Rishab, in your one first class wicket? Peter then's cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's brilliant>. Alrighty. <laughs> okay. He would have been in and around playing test cricket at the time, so you've got a test scout there. But I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Vaughny again. Yeah. I reckon he's conceded the okay. most. Okay. Yeah, um Gilly's economy rate is zero. <laughs> oh. Um Rishab's at four point five, oh. Vaughny's was nine. Yeah. 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 You're in Sue, you're picking on me again. <laughs> HR yeah. department. Um, Richard, what do you what do you bowl? Because I couldn't find it on Crick Info. What are you what are you spinning? You pace? See. See. Spinning action, I bowl fast bowling, leg spin, off spin, everything. Where, where, where was that game? <laughs> was that against uh, Australian eleven or something? The second eleven. Yeah, 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 we were playing that President Eleven match, and it was in CCI, I ah, guess, in ah, Mumbai. Right, right, yes. Ah, right. Yeah, good. Um, beautiful. Okay, this is one um, between. Well, it's so, British so, and Gilly. So, sorry, play. I just, I've just had a thought. So all these touring teams go to India, fearful of the the spin of Ashwin and Cool Deep and Jadeja, and got to get their game right in the practice game before the test start. And you get knocked over by Rishabh Pant. <laughs> That's not the start of the tour that you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Petey. <laughs> exactly right. Oh, that's great. Um, okay, number three. What's higher? The number of sixes hit by Rishabh in Ooh. T20 cricket, so that's club and international, or the number of sixes hit by Gilly in tests and ODIs? Oh, I think my... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going Rish. I'm going Rish. <laughs> Test in ODIs. So you're a youngster. Sure. No, 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 no. Then obviously he's going to hit more. He has played like <laughs> 1,000 matches. Come on, mate. I'm not that old. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to take his advice. I'm going with me. You're both going. Gilly Vaughney is going. Rishab. Um, Rishab in T20 cricket's 234. Gilly, 249. Oh. Just oh. Gilly. <laughs> I reckon that'll take about... Only, only till this podcast... Yeah, that's right. right. By the time this comes out, you'll be about 10 ahead of me. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, check. Gilly, three. Rishab, two. Vaughny, uh, ducky. <laughs> <laughs> We keep playing Rishab till Vaughny wins, so we're going to be here for a while. Um, num- number four. What is higher, Rishab's highest score in first-class cricket or Vaughny's highest score in test matches and ODIs <laughs> combined? <laughs> I'm going Rishab. I'll go with Vaughny. At least there has to be someone. Not even 300 <laughs> <laughs> Vaughny, 287. Rishab, yeah. 308. <laughs> Triple centurion. <laughs> Jesus. How many balls that, that off, Rishab? Can you remember? Yeah, it was in yeah. one kid. No, balls would be 308. Oh. Or 308. Pretty much a, a runner ball Not triple. <laughs> um, and, and I read the next month you got two centuries and two innings. And one of them was 135 of 67 balls just a few weeks mm. later. Oh, geez. Oh. No, no. So this is before 300. So this one is before, oh. just one match before, I scored my fastest 100 in first class cricket in India. That was 48 balls. And one was like <laughs> 67 balls. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. In that match, I scored like 
23 sixes in only that match. <laughs> swing hard, uh, swing hard. So, <laughs> yeah. So, Ollie, with only just yeah. one question left, unfortunately, it is an unassailable lead yeah, for Australia. Yeah, I didn't give any answer. Um, <laughs> Australia with four, India with two, and, um, well, England with one. As uh, Well, you guys like the number one lately. Yeah, so we, 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 I, I believe, like the England team, that I can <laughs> still win this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, even if you one, don't, you were the best the member of the quiz. Yourself. The way you answer, that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So the final question, we will do it because it might be worth five bonus points for you, Vaughny. Um, what is higher, and it's relevant to what we see at the moment, what is higher? Vaughny's test runs in India, as we've just seen in England, Gilly's test runs oh. in New Zealand, or Rishab's total test and ODI runs <laughs> against England? <laughs> so are you saying my runs in India? No, again, oh, right. against up, India. Gilly's Against I think my name in this ah. one. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going Vaughny. Rishab. Okay. And uh, Rishab's gone himself. It is Gilly had 923 runs against New Zealand in tests. Oh. Vaughny had 1,116 against India. Rishab, 1,000. Yeah. And 93, just a few yeah. more against England. Test and ODI. Hey. So right. All right. Ding, ding, ding. Yes. Yes. Oh, that was good. That was good. All right. Congratulations, Australia, with the win there. India second, England last. Um, <laughs> thank you, Ollie. Wonderful quiz. Now, uh, Rishab, we are running out of time with you. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Gents, is there anything you want to ask Rishab before he goes no, here? Anything I'm looking at. I, I will say, so De- who's going to win? The- so you can't yeah. say Delhi because I, did- I think that's unfair. Who's going to win the who's your biggest threat? I think whosoever play the best cricket will win the IPL. <laughs> Speaking some sense. Speaking uh, some sense. Um, well, not necessarily because England played the best cricket in India and they lost 4-1. You no, know, so we are not taking only personal opinion. We are taking the real opinion that whosoever play the best cricket will win and India yes. played it. So those, yes. that's why yeah, don't let him tell you any otherwise, Rishab Pant. I've got one. Quick, quick one. Can you give us give us a quick comment yeah. about the the young talent in that Indian team that's come through? Jaiswal, he's uh, really set the world on fire, and uh, just there was a number of talented youngsters that were were revealed. Pretty exciting time for Indian cricket, eh? I think really amazing the way all the youngsters are stepping up. I think it's been really amazing. Because, you know, over a period of time, some some new people come to the team. Every time you won't see them performing. Then when they perform and stay, keep their head, like, not thinking mm-hmm. about too much. Like, and Jaswal is someone who likes keeping his head down to the earth, I would say. And just keep doing what he's doing. And I think if he keeps on doing that, that's a long way to go. And he's been very promising. Yeah. Mm. Very, very good. Um, I've got actually one as well that um, I, I thought of. We've spoken about Alex Carey. We've spoken about Johnny Bairstow. Um, and you're a keeper, uh, another serious one. What would you have done in that scenario over the summer? We saw a great moment of uh, stay in your crease, Johnny. Um, have you seen anything like it as a keeper? And would you have done the same? <clears throat> See, honestly, if you ask me, I, I actually do know that moment. And you have put me in the spot. So, but... <laughs> You know, you have to do what's best for your team. Just yeah. staying in the spirit of the game most of the time. But at the same time, sometimes that spirit crosses. But I think that's part and parcel of the game and everyone takes it yeah. in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. Beautifully done. Great answer. Very good, Rishab. Very good answer. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck in the IPL. We will be watching. We will yeah. be watching. Um and support yes. India, not only Yeah, Rishab, we'll be, uh, <laughs> Vaughn and I are going to be over at the IPL at various stages, mate. So we, we both very much look forward to catching up with you. and But more so watching you not just get back on the field, but uh, get back and enlightening the entertainment the way that you do and lighting up the whole game. It's a far better spectacle with you playing it, mate. So we're thrilled that you've recovered and we're uh, thrilled that you've been able to join us here on Club Prairie Fire. We do a little traditional toast. You don't need to partake, but the, I'll do a real quick one. Here's to you being back fully fit and fine, mate. Good on you, buddy. Cheers, cheers. Thank you. Good on you, Rishab.
Good on you. I, I, I'm Rishab, um, have you got any tips? Um, I'm going to Cheltenham <laughs> races today. You don't have any tips for me, do you? So you guys have enough experience in this whole world, yeah. so I have no one to <laughs> Very good. Thank you uh, for I, having I, I think, Really appreciate yeah, it. The only winner I'll get is that I'll know at 11 o'clock I'll be having a, a, a nice pot of Guinness. That's how I start yeah, my race right. day. That sounds and, wonderful. And there's All one right. more update. that, that we, we are now obviously supporting huge yes. Delhi fans. The other team we're supporting, Rishab, is in the European Cricket League. I'm sure you're watching it. Our team, Cluj, in Romania, they start on Friday um, against Oslo. They then play Count from Gibraltar, CYMS from Ireland, and then Muflon from Cyprus. So if they get through that, they're in the That's finals next cool. week against Horny Church. So That's good luck, cool. Luke. Terrific. Very good. We'll let you go, Rishab. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, us. champion. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Thank now, yes, uh, we are. Just a reminder, we are at Club Prairie Fire on all socials. That's Twitter, X. They're the same thing, technically. Instagram. Uh, YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, I know Rishab yeah. already has. Yeah. I don't need to ask you. Oh, you love it. It's your number one podcast. Um, make sure you listen. Uh, make sure you tell everybody and uh, enjoy watching cricket for the next, well, seven days till we see you. Yeah. Cheerio. Bye. <laughs>